Hello to everyone. So welcome to Thursday's lesson. This is going to be a lesson for 9th of April. That's Thursday. Okay, so as yesterday we had discussed the homework, I hope most of you have got the answers right and you are continuously checking your homework. So today we'll be starting with chapter 5, lesson 5, which is about solving linear inequalities. Now this is all similar to the previous lesson 1 or 2, which we have done where we had to solve equations, linear equations, but here we are solving linear inequalities, okay? So this is uh, from your book, this is page number 360 onwards, we'll be doing this lesson. So before we start, but first let's check the definitions of these two things. So here they have given a linear inequality is similar to a linear equation, but the equal sign is replaced with an inequality symbol. So instead of the equal sign in a linear equation, you know linear equations means they are straight line graphs or straight line, straight line equations. When you graph them, that's going to be a straight line. So similar to that linear inequality, the difference is only the equal sign will be replaced with the inequality symbols. That's greater, lesser, greater than, less than, these symbols, it will be replaced by that. So a solution of a linear inequality is any ordered pair that makes the inequality true. So which is a solution as we have seen the solution of an equation, linear equation. So it is similar solution of a linear inequality is any ordered pair means the value of x or y which will make the inequality true. So let me show you here. So this is the definition as what we learned from the book. Uh, the next one is, this is the example which you will be doing. Okay, identifying solutions of inequalities. So here you are gonna say whether the ordered pair is a solution of the inequality or not. Now these questions are not given in your book. So of course you need to listen to me carefully to see how you are gonna be solving. Doing nothing to do, just replace the value of x and y in place of the x and y in the inequality, which means in place of x, that is you will write two multiplied by four and in place of y, you will write negative two. So that's all you're gonna do, substitute negative two and four for x and y. So once you have, remember we have drawn the table like this in lesson one, I think, okay, it's similar to that. So once you have done this, you have the value of y here, so that's 4, and 2 in place of x, we must substitute negative 2. So 2 multiplied by negative 2 is going to give you a negative 4, plus 1 is going to give you a negative 3. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3, which means this inequality is not right. I mean, the ordered pair is not the solution. Why? Because 4 is not less than negative 3. We all know that. 4 is not less than negative 3, so negative 2 and 4 is not a solution. This is how you find whether the ordered pair is a solution or not. Let's check another example. This is, okay, this is the um, check it out part. No, it's also not. There's another example. So this is going to be tell whether the ordered pair is a solution of the inequality. What you're going to do, as usual, you're going to draw the table, okay? And then when you, once you draw the table, you are going to substitute the values of x and y in their concerned places. So when you substitute, you will have y up, you will write the inequality, y is less than x minus 4. In place of the x, the value of x, you will take from the ordered pair in place of x, in place of y. Sorry, I just wrote, told y before, x before. In place of y, you will write 1. And in place of x, you will write 3. So that's going to be 3 minus 4, which is going to be negative 1. Now, finally check, is this statement correct? 1 is greater than negative 1? Yes, it's correct. Because 1 is greater than negative 1. So which means 3 and 1 is a solution for the inequality which is given. Okay, so before I go to the next one, uh, just watch this video and then I'll come back to the next one. Okay, let's change gears a little bit and take a look at not linear equations. That was the wrong one, I think, this one. Okay. Just 
about linear inequalities. And let's talk about how we could actually solve linear inequalities. They're a little bit funny and tricky because in fact, there might be lots and lots and lots of solutions, unlike solving a linear equation when we have usually just one. All right, first of all, let's just see when we have a solution to a linear inequality or not. So let's try a couple of examples. So the question is, is this ordered pair, zero comma five, a solution to the linear inequality y is greater than x minus three? Well, there's one way to find out. All we do is we insert the x value in for x, the y value in for y, and see if this inequality holds or not. So if we try that, we see we put a five in for y. And the question is, is five greater than whatever we get here? We plug a zero in for x. And so I see, is five greater than negative three? Well, it sure is, so yes, and so in fact, 0 comma 5 is a solution to this linear inequality. It's not the only one, but it certainly is a solution. You can check it to see if the inequality holds or not to see if something is a solution. Let's try this one. Is 1 comma 4 a solution to the inequality y is less than 2x minus 5? Well, again, we just plug in 1 for x and 4 for y and see if we have an inequality that's true or not. So I, that question is, is 4 less than 2 times 1 minus 5? Well, is 4 less than 2 minus 5, which is negative 3? Is 4 less than negative 3? No. This is not true. And so therefore, this ordered pair is not in the solution set, or is not a solution to this linear inequality. Okay, now keeping this in mind, so I think we can start solving some questions. Uh, let's start solving page from your exercise page, page 364, question number two, three, and four. So let's start solving question number two, three, and four. Now, as you girls know, this space is not at all enough for me. So I will just do it shortly, but then you will have to, of course, do it in a proper way by drawing it the table and then finding it out. Even if you don't draw the table, of course, there should be the two sides of the inequality. Okay, so here all that we have to do is Fine. So all what we are going to do here is write the concern numbers in the correct places. So that's going to be y is 3. Okay. So 3 is less than or equal to. Now, again, as usual, I cannot insert the equal symbol there. So I will just, I can't do anything for that. Okay. So let me try if I can do it with this. No, I can't. Okay, so you need to know that there is an equal, uh, less than or equal to symbol down, the line down. So negative is already in the equation, in the inequality, and then they have given us zero is um, x, zero plus three. Now, is zero plus three, three, of course, it's going to be three, which means three is less than or equal to three if you get this less than or equal to three means your answer is right because three is equal to three which means the zero and three is a solution for the given system or the given inequality so you just have to say yes it is a solution that's all so question number three similarly we have two and zero y is less than or less than uh, sorry greater than negative 2x minus 2 so all what you need to do is y is zero so you are going to write zero is greater than negative 2 x is given to be 2 so multiply that by 2 minus 2 so negative 2 and 2 is going to give you negative 4 so the next step is going to be 0 is greater than negative 4 minus 2 okay so which means zero is greater than 
negative six. So now you check whether the statement is true. True is zero greater than negative six? Yes, it is because any negative no, um, negative number is smaller than zero. So you just have to say yes. That's all. I write yes here. It's a problem. So I write yes here. So two and zero is a solution for the given inequality. So let's move to question number four. I will give you a minute. You can start solving it and then we will discuss it together. Okay, so I think you must have solved it by now and got the answer. So this is this, these are the steps you need to do. In place of y, we will replace the y with one is less than two multiplied by negative two because x is negative two plus four. So one is gonna be less than two negative two multiplied negative two is gonna give you negative four plus four. So negative four plus four is gonna give you zero. So which means one is less than zero. Now, do you think this statement is true? Is one less than zero? Of course not. So you just have to say no. This is not a solution for the given inequality. This part of the lesson is very easy. Okay, now let's move on to the next part. Okay, just watch this and then I will explain you clearly what you need to be doing. Now, to find all the solutions to a linear inequality, one powerful way of doing that is to graph the solutions. So we actually graph the solutions as if we were graphing the line. Let's take a look at an example and see how to find all the solutions to a linear inequality. Let's consider y greater than x minus two. All right, how do I graph that? Well, the first thing I do is realize that what's really going on here is I'm gonna cut the world up, the plane up into two pieces, okay? And the boundary between one piece and the other piece is gonna be the straight line given by y, and then putting an equal sign in here, y equals x minus two. Okay, so the first thing we do is consider what's called the boundary line, which is the equation that you get by putting an equal sign in here. So imagine y equals x minus two. What's the graph of that? Well, we know how to do that. The um, y-intercept is negative two, right here. And the slope is invisible one over one. One up, one over. One up, one over. One up, one over, and so forth. Now, I wanna connect them, but be careful. I'm not gonna to wanna to connect them with a solid line because actually, when I go back to the original question at hand, I see that this is a strict inequality. It's not y is greater than or equal to, and a little line underneath the, the inequality. It's y is strictly greater than this, which means that that boundary line will not be included in our collection of solutions, because that would be where y equals this, and y has to be strictly larger. So to indicate that, when we see a strict inequality here, we use the dash line. So we put dashes instead of a solid line. We'll use a solid line when the inequality is greater than or equal to, but here we use a dash line. Now notice that just as I advertised, we cut the world up into two pieces, this piece and that piece. Now how are we gonna find out which one is the solution? One of them will be. And the easiest way to do it is to pick a point in one of the regions and then ask, is that point a point that satisfies the original inequality? If it does, then we wanna be on that side. If it doesn't, then we wanna be on the opposite side. So the point I usually pick whenever I can is the origin. So as long as my boundary line doesn't pass through the origin, it's a really easy point to pick. So let's pick x equals zero, y equals zero, and see if it satisfies this inequality. Zero, is zero greater than zero minus two? So is zero greater than negative two? It sure is, which means that this is the region that I want for my solution. And so this is the region that I'm gonna shade in, and you can have really a lot of fun 
she is in. When I was in school, my teacher called these hash marks. It's sort of like you know, the hash kind of thing. And so this is now the solution. So what does this mean? It means that any single point you pick in the coordinate plane that's in this orange region, but not on this dotted boundary, any point there will actually satisfy this. So you can see there's a half a plane worth of solutions to this linear inequality. Cool. Let's try another one together. Sort of fun. So here I'm looking at the inequality 2x plus 3y is less than or equal to 12. Okay. Well, how am I going to how am I going to deal with this? Well, the first thing I might want to do is is find the the graph of this to compute the boundary line. So I'm going to look at the boundary line. That's a little teeny bit of work. So how can we do it? Well, one way to do it is just to write this as y equals mx plus b. So let's consider the boundary line equation. And solve it for y. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. And I see 3y equals negative 2x plus 12. And I'm going to divide both sides by 3 to undo the multiplication of 3. And when I do that, I'm actually going to divide this piece by 3 and this piece by 3. And so I see y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 4. Ah, OK, great. Well, now I can actually graph that boundary line has a y-intercept of 4 and a slope of negative 2 over 3. That's rise over run. So I drop down 2 and go over 3. 1, 2. So I drop down 2. 1, 2. And go over 3. 1, 2, 3. Drop down 2. Go over 3. 1, 2. And now I'm going to connect them. Now, what kind of line should I put in here? Should I put in a dashed line or a solid line? Well, I go back to the original inequality and notice that I have something is less than or equal to something else. That means that I'm allowed to have equality. And the equality, of course, lies right on that line. So in fact, what I see here is that I am using a solid line, a solid go, just to put that in there, because I see that there's equality allowed. That makes it solid. If there's no thing there, then I use a dashed line. Now, which, uh, which side do I have my solutions on? I'll pick 0, 0 again. So plug in 0 for x and 0 for y. And so is that a true inequality? Is 0 less than or equal to 12? It sure is. And so I see I shade down. If it weren't, I'd shade the opposite side. And so what does that mean? It means that any point in this orange region, any point at all you pick, x, y, that are in that orange region, they will be solutions to this inequality. Lots of solutions. In fact, a half plane worth of solutions to this linear inequality. Pretty cool. Okay, girls. I think I I hope you have understood what he's what he was trying to explain you there. Okay, now this part I'm not doing because it's a very easy one. You just have to substitute the value of x and y and find out whether the inequality is true or not. Okay. Now let me show you how to graph and check which is the solution for the inequality. Now before that you have to learn these. See, the first step is solve the inequality for y the slope intercept form. As we have done in the previous lessons, always make sure that you have solved even the inequality for the y intercept form, which is y equal to mx plus b. Only the difference is in those we have the equal sign, here we will have the inequality sign, that's all. Then the second step is, then you will first decide whether you will, once you are drawing the graph, you will use a dotted line or you will use a straight solid line. Now here you have to be careful. If you have a greater or equal or less or equal sign as shown here, you will use a solid line. If it is the inequality shows less or equal, greater or equal, you will use a solid line. Whereas if it is only greater or lesser sign, you will use a dotted line, which is called as a dashed line. Okay, this is step number two. Now step number three, you have to shade the half plane above the line for y, which is greater or 
greater or equal to. So above the line, you will shade for greater or greater or equal to. And below the line, you will shade for less than or less than or equal to. And then you will check your answer. You will, it will get more clear for you once we start solving these questions. Okay, so what you need to do here is graph the solutions of the linear inequality. Y is less than or equal to 2x minus 3. Now always make sure first your equation should be in the slope intercept form. Now already this is in that form y is equal to mx plus b whereas this is not equal to it doesn't matter let that be. Okay so this is already in the slope intercept form. Now then decide you are going to draw a dotted line or a solid line here because it's less than or equal to you will have to draw a solid line okay now how are you going to do that you know now the slope is 2 which is over 1 remember we learned in the previous lesson the slope is going to be always the number over an invisible one which means rise over run now because this is rise it's a positive one we will go up one up two and right one up two and right one and the y intercept here is negative three so let's see how you have to graph that okay these are the steps okay now see this the first draw for the y intercept so that's negative three you will put a dot here a point here negative 3 and then what's the slope it is 2 over the invisible one which means you will go 2 up so 1 2 up right 1 so this is your next point go up 1 2 right 1 so you will have a, a line okay I mean you will have the points then you will join the points with a dotted line now because the inequality says less than you will go below the line this is above the line right all of us know that's above and this is below so you will not shade it above because this is lesser you will shade the part which is below the line now to check whether the answer is correct or not as usual take always zero and zero and substitute in this equation in, in this inequality and check your answer the one you have shaded is correct or not so always take zero zero so this means zero is not less than or equal to negative three which means it's a false statement so you should not be shading the part which is for zero zero see the zero zero part which is the origin is not shaded this part is not shaded because the statement over there was not true which means the part we shaded was right okay so this is how you have to graph it so let me explain you this part too now this is 5x plus 2y is greater than or negative greater than negative 8 we have to of course solve this for the y intercept so once you solve for y intercept okay this is going to be the y intercept how are you going to solve this is the other way of solving it all what you need to do is 2i 2y is going to be greater than negative 8 negative 5x right so once because you will have this part so don't consider this two because we are not you doing those two so 2y is going to be greater than negative 8 and negative 5x the 5x will come to the other side it will become negative 5x so to remove this y you need to divide both the numbers with a 2 so we cannot divide a negative 5 by 2 we can that will give us negative 2.5 but because we need to have the rise over run so we will leave it as negative 5 over 2 and then negative 8 divided by 2 will give us negative 4 so we have the slope is negative 5 over 2 which means it's a fall you will come down so negative 5 means 5 down and 2 to the right and then the y intercept is negative 4 so all what you're going to do is first you have to put the point on the intercept that's negative 4 and then you will go 5 up Oh, sorry five down so which means if you go down and down here in this coordinate plane we don't have the uh, access to that so what they have done here is they have gone up and to the left so they go up one two three four five and to the left so once you do like that you will get the core uh, the line you will join the points and then which side are you going to shade because it's greater right of course you'll be shading the upper part of the line so this is the below part and this is the upper part so that's where you're going to shade now to check 
you what with what are you going to check you'll be checking with zero zero so in place of this you'll put zero zero so five zero is zero two zero is zero so a is zero greater than negative eight yes once you solve that that's going to give you zero zero okay whatever the way we are solving is also right this is also right they just took the uh, y intercept form and they checked it so which means zero zero is zero is greater than negative eight is a solution it is correct right so that means the point zero zero also should be coupled once you shade the part now i don't want to drag these examples more rather i want to start doing the questions so let's try this one Graph the solution of each linear inequality, y is greater or less than negative x. Okay, so what we are going to do here, we will consider this as an equal sign as we need the formula y is equal to mx plus d. So let me write it as y is equal to negative 1 because it's negative x, which means there is a negative invisible one here, negative 1x. And then we don't have the intercept, which means the intercept is going to be a zero. This is our equation. So this is when you write it in the slope intercept form. Y is equal to mx plus b. Here we don't have anything, so we wrote zero. Okay, now what is going to be the invisible number here? Of course, it's going to be rise over run. So which means this is a negative one over one. Negative one means you will come down. So let's graph this. So all what you need to keep in mind is for this question, your y-intercept is going to be zero, okay? And then your, uh, er, the slope is going to be negative one over one. So which means you will come down one and to the right one. And here in place of the equal sign, that should be a less or equal, which means you are going to draw a solid line. So let's see how do we graph this, okay? So what I'm going to do here is first I will start by graphing the y-intercept. So that's a zero, right? So we will draw a point on zero. Now, from the zero, you will come one down and one to the right because the slope was negative one and over one. So one down, one to the right. So this is our next point. One down, one to the right. So that's going to be our second point. So from here again, one down, one to the right. So we have four points, which is more than enough now. So now you first decide whether you are going to use a solid line or you're going to use a dotted line. Of course, your line has to be a solid one because in the equation, in the inequality, it was great. Uh, the symbol was great. Was that greater or equal to? It was, yeah, it was less or equal to, so it was less or equal to, let me check it first. That's going to be less than or equal to, okay, so to So how are we going to do that? Less than or equal to means, of course, your one has to be a solid line. So simply join these points, okay, with a solid line. Now, of course, you have to be having a graph paper for this. So you will have to, because, and then you will have to draw a grid like this, a square because uh, in the book it's not given so i think in your homeworks it's given but to do the classwork you need to do this you have to draw a square once you draw the coordinate i mean these axes draw a square around so that you will have a specific place for to shade it now because it's less than this is above the line this is below the line so you think that do um wait, how do you shade it because it's less than you will have to be shading this part of the graph not the upper part I don't think I can shade this. Okay, so you will have to be shading this part here. All this part because it says it's less than or equal to. So this is how you are going to be solving and graphing the solutions. Okay, make sure that it does not come to the other side. 
because that's going to be greater. This is going to be lesser. This is how you are going to be shading your graph. I hope that's clear for you. Okay, now I will do one more question with you. That's going to be question number six. Okay, so again for question number six, the make sure that the inequality is in slope intercept form. Now, is this equation inequality in the slope intercept form? Y is greater than or equal to 3x plus 1. Is it great in the slope intercept form? Yes, y is equal to mx plus b. Instead of the equal sign, it's greater here. Now, of course, we will not be using a solid line here because this equation, this inequality shows that it is, uh, it should be a dotted line. Okay, so not the a slope because once I go back to that screen, I cannot again come back to this okay so here your slope is going to be three right and there should be an invisible one of course that's going to be three up one down and the y-intercept is going to be in, uh, for it's going to be one so I will only specify what's going to be here the slope is going to be three over the invisible one and then y-intercept is going to be one Okay, so these two things are the ones which we need to keep in mind. So with this, let's move on to graph again. Okay, so what was the y-intercept for you there? The y-intercept was one. So start by drawing it the uh, y-intercept one. And what was the slope? It was three over one, which means you will go one, two, three up and one to the right. So the next point is here, okay? Then again, three up and one to the right. So your next point, your next point is going to be here. Now that we have three points, we can use a dotted line, never use a, a solid line because uh, that's the inequality was greater than so here I think I cannot use a dotted line as I don't have the option but I'll try my best to do it dotted first let me join it okay so I'm joining this three points until that's going to be until the end of the graph or that's why I told you before also draw a square around so that you can draw the line properly. Now, I think I can, if I can, I will do it. Yes, I can. So you are going to be drawing a dotted line for that, not a solid one. Now that's not a perfect dotted one, but you know, you can understand what I'm telling you. Okay, so that's going to be a dotted line. Now, once you have drawn the dotted line, next question is which part of the graph are you going to color? Are you going to color the above one, the one which is above, or are you going to color the one which is below? Now, the inequality says it is greater. So, which means you will have like this part or this part. Now, you tell, you need to decide which part are you going to color. The inequality says greater. So, this is going to be the above one. This is going to be the part above, which is greater. And this is going to be the part which is lesser. So which part do you think we need to be shading? If you understood the lesson, you can of course tell it very easily to me, which part are we going to shade? Which part, the upper or the down part? Think, think, which one are you going to shade? Okay, so of course you're going to be shading this side because this is the one which is greater and this one is going to be lesser. So you take the, uh, I mean, you don't need to shade it completely, but you can just draw some random uh, lines like so, just to show that, just to show that it's shaded. So you can do this and shade the whole area just to show that the solution can be any one, any one point from this part of the graph. Okay, so this is how you need to be doing it. So you will shape this part. 
fine i hope the lesson is clear for you girls because only you need to change the inequality to y is equal to mx plus b form and then you will have to draw the dots as we have done in many other lessons before and then only decide whether it's going to be a dotted line or a solid line if it is greater or lesser only it's going to be a dotted one if it is equal to then it is going to be a solid line and then you will decide it's going to be above the line or below the line depending on this or on the symbol if it is lesser it will be below if it's greater it's going to be upper so i have a homework for you that's going to be question number seven and eight and uh, this is just to tell you i want to see the homework for these two questions you must upload your answers on edmodo all of you that's not for just one of one or two of you all the uh, there are 15 in 7a and 21 in 7b so i want to see everyone's answer for question number seven and eight because i will not be discussing this answer tomorrow because what happens is when i discuss i don't know what you girls are doing so i want to see all the answers on you can send it as a message if you don't want to put it openly in the group you can send it as a message for me but i want to see the answer for this for everyone okay so you will do question number seven and eight and send the answer to me uh, and then tomorrow i will show you the remaining part of the lesson what's to be done but for the homework for today is going to be that's you have the whole weekend left for you you have friday saturday also so you can do these two questions do send me the answers for question number seven and eight so until i meet you girls in the next video do take care of yourself and keep safe